You're welcome, mate. I've been kind of off for about six months now and still having loose stools, hoping that the gut repair protocol might regulate this. It's one factor. There's a lot of different different factors. Some people basically, we had, I mean, Necro Kitty had this problem. She went, uh, she had a lot of problems. Um, she was having diarrhea for about two years. Um, she eventually did the protocol of and all that and fixed the diarrhea. But the, then she got constipated because she was missing um, a lot of the, the, some of the bifidobacteria and, and a lot of the, um, you know, the sort of lactobacillus types. And without those, you can end up, once you suppress the pathogenic ones, you can end up um, with a bit of constipation. So she was able to resolve that by doing kefir and restoring some of those important um, microbiome um, players, which is the bifidobacteria ones and also um, the, 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 the Ruteri ones. You know, in the, I, I think some naturopaths said, now I, I don't have any data, but there's sort of the naturopaths out there are saying in America, the North America, that something like about 90% of the American population based on their stool samples that, you know, the companies that actually do um, like microbiome tests on the population that doctors send to them, they've actually found that um, Bifidobacteria infantis and Bifidobacteria ruteri in particular, both those, rhamnosis, eh, slightly less, but it does help. They tend to suppress the pathogenics. And so when you re-regulate the gut microbiome with taurine, you end up with some of these um, in a more dominant position, which is really important because that's what sort of keeps the gut microbiome in a stable state. It keeps um, also, it keeps spermidine down and it also keeps histamine down in the gut, which is really important. I've done a video on the, and how taurine plays a big role in that through inflammasome. So I've actually, if you check the gut, the, the microbiome um, metabolite that plays a role, I sort of cover that in there. So it's sort of a combination of these things. This is why I'm saying that, I mean, even if you take a look at, you know, an ancestral people, they did have, you know, fermented type meats and stuff like that. Even the, even the Inuit will throw in all these sort of fermented stuff like they will throw in parts of, parts of fish and they'll let it ferment and actually cr um, uh, create a sort of a probiotic type thing. Um, also... Because in the acid, you know, the lactobacillus and all that are acid loving. So they tend to basically in things that become sour, you know, like even traditionally people used to create pickled, you know, onions, pickled cucumbers and all that. Again, I mean, my father still gherkins and stuff like that, still for the same reason that it basically provides that sort of stuff because we were sort of scavenger carnivals and so we need those sort of things thanks richard um which is sort of uh really really important as well that sometimes we we neglect you know i mean some people you know don't want to do that sort of stuff and they go oh well i'll get it from certain cheeses that are raw cheeses that have got certain um certain um bacterial strains yep yep that's you can get that when you do come out of your mother's um uh, birth canal you do get coated with these in particular the lactobacillus that but they are very vulnerable to antibiotics or low-grade antibiotic mimicking molecules like glyphosate which is in all the plants that most people have been consuming now for the last couple of decades i think the big rise in you know switching from a two-thirds animal-based diet before ref refrigeration to a one-third animal-based diet and two-thirds plant-based diet that the majority of the population does out there and has been doing for a long time is actually bringing in these compounds um you know the glyphosate and stuff like that which has been registered monsanto's registered it as an antibiotic compound 
It's in the patent office of the US and many other countries. So it's not me saying it, it's actually Monsanto's themselves registering it and to protect their intellectual properties that it's uh, that it has those um, effects. So basically, when, you, when you're eating a lot of the plants that you get in the supermarkets, you're basically giving yourself, on a daily basis, a low-grade antibiotic nearly. And then people wonder why 90% of some of these important um, strains are missing. So people are across the board, whether whatever diet they're on, they're having gut issues. This is not, you know specific to one community or one group it's right across generally our species appropriate diet is a superior diet but it's not going to mitigate a lot of damage that's actually we've done for many years on inappropriate diets and eating certain foods and the way they're processed as well there's all those factors and it's creating a lot of these issues yes <clears throat> 